So welcome everybody to BeamNG Drive and today we're going to be doing a, a crash test and the crash test hall and basically we're going to be doing this small overlap crash test which basically means 25% of the front of the car will impact a uh, concrete barrier and uh, yeah it does uh, bring up some really rather horrific crash damage because it's subjecting the vehicle to uh, the kind of crash impact it's really not designed for because yeah, most cars are designed especially older cars or you know typical cars are designed to be on head-on crashes you know head-on with a car or an, an object so uh, yeah let's uh, see what uh, several vehicles on this game can do this being one of the smallest cars on the game is uh, likely to uh, suffer quite some horrendous damage slow it right down so as you can see the uh, front uh, left headlight area is what's going to be impacted on these cars and yeah it eviscerates the uh, front left wheel the steering wheel has completely uh, caved in speeding up a little bit and yeah as you can see the uh, passenger compartment has com been completely uh, crushed in the point where yeah there's no real s chance of survivability there even for the passenger there was a would be an unlikely uh, chance of survival but yeah especially for the uh, driver there that is a uh, yeah a devastating crash and that's purely because it's subjecting the car to uh, crash forces it's not meant to what i think is going on is that the uh, it comes through here obviously the fender and the lights and uh, that side of the uh, bumper is extremely weak and obviously the uh, tire isn't particularly strong either and as soon as it eviscerates down there it ends up hitting the firewall or the bulkhead between you and whatever's in front of you in this obviously there is no engine but it is separating the passengers and the driver from the fuel tank and other gubbings uh, but yeah it basically hits the firewall and the bulkhead and then that's not really meant to be crashed into on just one small side of it so it just ends up caving in and then transferring the rest of the uh, crash damage to the uh, people inside which yeah is devastating. Obviously a lot of modern cars are meant to deal with this crash now. If you look online you'll uh, see plenty of crash test footage of much more modern vehicles, much heavier vehicles surviving such a crash. But yeah, older cars like the ones we're trying out really are not meant to deal with it and uh, yeah it shows. So let's see what a Covet can do. Now I'm not uh, keeping these cars at any kind of real speed in terms of between one another. It's just purely about seeing a. Uh, I did not slide down. I do apologise. I'm just getting used to uh, using a uh, Xbox Three, uh, Xbox One controller for this, just because it's easier to uh, get the uh, right line on the uh, drive right. As you can see there, I didn't hit it completely 25%, more like 40% or something, and as you can see that's a fairly survivable crash. But if we do it now properly, like we're trying to do, then you'll uh, see what I mean when it comes to the 25% uh, overlap. It is very difficult to get it going. I wish this uh, mod had uh, the ability to just have the car sat on this rail here. And then you could uh, just fling cars in at any speed. This is going wrong. I do apologise. Very difficult thing to get right. I'm surprised I got it right as quickly as I did with the auto bellow, to be honest. Alright, here we go. So, yeah, this is obviously a more modern car than the auto bellow is. But as you can see, the roof does not stand a chance. It's the steering wheel hasn't been as dramatic as it was on the auto bellow, but it is still right up to where the passenger and I mean the driver would be.
definitely looks a more or less survivable crash, but you can see the uh, steering wheel there has uh, gone off to the right there. So even if it did have an airbag, it's unlikely that the, the driver would be able to impact it, and it'd more likely impact the dashboard. So uh, yeah, the cover more modern, and there's more space there for survivability. Certainly the passenger would be a lot better off in this than the Autobello, but yeah, driver-wise, still a devastating, devastating crash. So uh, let's see what something a little bit bigger can do. What about the Roth Alpha? Now this is obviously a still a really rather normal kind of car. It's certainly a uh, still an older car though. But yeah, definitely a bigger car, definitely more space up front for the uh, crash forces to go through. Will that necessarily mean a more survivable impact? Again, you can see it just completely goes through the fender, goes through the wheel. And yeah, that is not a survivable impact, as you can see. The roof has gone. Even the chassis is bent on the bottom there. And yeah, that is a uh, seriously, seriously devastating crash. Let's take it from the perspective of the driver, and as you can see, the seat has moved, the steering wheel's moved, the console and the dashboard has crumpled up, and yeah, the camera is fixed in a position where the driver should be sitting and as you can see we're more back where the uh, rear passenger legs should be so uh, yeah not a pretty crash there and yeah it's basically this 25% overlap is basically simulating you hitting someone coming in the opposite direction where you're just straying over the white lines into their uh, path rather than you know head on impact between one another. Let's see what a classic muscle car can do. We'll go with a four-door, more base model. Four-door is more likely to be a bit more common than uh, some other variants. Again, a large car. A little bit of a tank slapper on there, but we're still hitting. Got 25% of the front on the uh, concrete barrier there, and again, the steering wheel is shooting back it towards the driver. Doors have completely come off. And yeah, we've even somewhat ended up on our side. And as you can see, you can tell that the uh, car is only impacting with the softest part of the left hand side because the engine still works, even though it's turned off. And if we had the power to move, which I don't think we do because of the amount of damage that the car's taken, it would still move because, yeah, it's not hit the engine really. It's hit the radiator, which is why it's leaking. Uh, but yeah, it's not hit the engine whatsoever, which is obviously one of the toughest parts of the car. It's just completely bypassed that, most of the bumper, and it's just gone right through the fender into the passenger compartment. And yeah, zero survivability there for the driver. Might be alright for the passengers, certainly in the back the passengers might be alright, but yeah, the passengers up front would be in a precarious position, quite frankly. Right. Something modern. Let's go for a, uh, a people carrier. Which one do we want to go for? Let's go for this one. So yeah, this is a car that should be designed for safety because it is carrying a lot more people. It's generally currently carrying families. But even just that slight graze there has taken out the wheel, which is just indicative of the forces that are going on. 
just on that little side of the engine. Why well, the engine keeps going off? Miss there, but even that is a devastating crash, exposing everybody inside to the outside elements. We will get it. And we completely nailed that one up. Again, that wasn't hardly a uh, nice crash. Not that there really is such a thing, to be honest. Yeah, it's really, really sensitive. I do apologise. That's more like it. Yeah, what's a people carry gonna do? This kind of thing you'd expect to be safe. And nope. Not even slightly. Again, the further back you are, the better you'd be, but yeah, the driver is really, really not in a good place there. The engine hasn't survived this, so but yeah, that's more likely to do with the fact that it's an inline engine rather than the V8 in the uh, blue book but yeah that is still not a pretty crash whatsoever and uh, yeah interior wise as you can see the steering wheel is right where your chest would be and uh, yeah but again this is a kind of crash that really does impact the driver more than anyone else in the car which is why it's vitally important that you pay attention while driving because in all likelihood, you're the one that's going to be impacted more than anyone else, so, yeah. It's not a pretty sight whatsoever. Right. Let's go for something more modern. Now, surely this will do alright, surely. is pretty devastating again. It's the same kind of characteristics really, the steering wheel moves, the, ste the driver's seat moves sometimes, the roof definitely goes up skywards which just shows how much of the impact forces have hit the A pillar more than uh, the actual front of the car. So uh, yeah, it's not a pretty sight. Let's see if we can do an even better one. or on precise to be honest but yeah as you can see it eviscerates all of the softest parts of the car and then leaves the, strong, the parts that are supposed to be strong open to pretty much 100% of the crash forces even though they are the strong bits they are meant to work in conjunction with the other strong bits of the vehicle to uh, slow the car down alright but yeah just doesn't work when they're uh, left on their own and as you can see, that's the result. What next? Well, I think an even more modern vehicle should do. Now this is clearly looking like something from BMW. More modern car, certainly an SUV in that regard. So 
Surely this will be safe. Is that the case? Nope. There goes the A pillar. Completely crumples up. And the also real devastating thing about these crashes is it usually renders the uh, door inoperable on the driver's side. And as we see in some cases also the uh, passenger left hand side. So if you needing to be rescued then it's going to take even longer to get you out of there and uh, yeah that's pretty devastating. It doesn't look quite as devastating maybe as some of the other crashes because you can see the steering wheel is still in front of where the camera is placed but yeah you're not going to be walking away from that even if you are going to survive it so uh, yeah that's pretty devastating. So that's a new SUV so what's a uh, older kind of you know off-road high driving vehicle going to do? Like the Roma for instance. What could that possibly do uh, in comparison to the uh, more modern uh, off-road vehicle? We'll go for the base car. I don't know for some reason why the uh, the uh, textures haven't loaded in for the wheels, but never mind. Because obviously this game is consistently being updated that they're not always around. And yeah, that is way worse than the uh, BMW knockoff SUV. Yeah, the steering wheel is practically onto the uh, driver's seat. This being a Roma, the car still works, but yeah, the driver would not be. Still works, surprisingly. But yeah, that just shows again that the uh, mechanical parts have not taken the impact. It's purely been the superficial bodywork aspects, and then that's transferred through to everyone else. So let's see what a uh, now this should be fun because this car is hardly the uh, strongest of vehicles so let's see what a hopper can do I've seen this car have some really rather impressive crashes so uh, let's see if we can uh, impress here now I do have to remind you that obviously we're going at far greater speeds than would actually be tested and we missed Doing a bit of superficial bodywork there, damage. Yeah, these are only really typically done at 40, but we're still within the speed limit most of the time, especially over here in the UK. So it's not like we're uh, speeding along at hundreds of miles an hour. taking damage there to the point where the uh, A pillar has actually impacted the concrete barrier itself shredding the bodywork from the chassis now this is another devastating part of the small overlap crash this is that with more rod older vehicles which you know a body on frame vehicles that you uh, risk this happening and as you can see that is the last thing you want to do not only is the passenger and the driver exposed now to the elements because the doors come off and but you're also obviously uh, dealing with the crash physics and the fact that now the car isn't even attached to the chassis itself so uh, or the bodywork isn't attached to the chassis itself so uh, yeah any faster and yeah you you be risking the entire bodywork coming off because as you can see let's see if we can even pull it with only 30% yeah as you can see it's only really attached by the right hand side now so yeah, any faster and it would probably twist around and break off on that right hand side and uh, yeah thrown into any traffic that would be coming up behind you which would not be pleasant especially since you've already devastated that part of the car 
see what a Grand Marshal can do. Now these are heavy, heavy vehicles and there's a significant amount of bodywork up front. So if any car's going to do it, surely this will survive such a thing. Sort of a yes, to be honest. Of all the vehicles to uh, slightly survive, this has done it. But let's try it again, see if we uh, can get it a bit more on to the point where we need it to be. Yep, this car is one of the safest on the game in terms of the small overlap crash test. Granted, the door has been rendered inoperable, so yeah, you'd uh, if you had suffered some injuries, then you'd be uh, wild to get you out of there. But yeah, surprise, surprise, the Grand Marshal is the uh, most safest of vehicles when it comes to the crash test. And uh, yeah, the steering wheel has barely moved. Dashboard's been crumpled up a little bit, but yeah, that is surprising. I was joking when I was saying about it being the uh, having such large bodywork and everything and more likely being able to survive but as you can see there that is the case which yeah is a big surprise to be honest right let's see what an actual modern car can do in the form of the Cherry Air we'll try out the uh, saloon version first and then we'll try out the SUV and then the hatchback just to see if there's any difference between the three Not the quickest of vehicles, though, these. We're still going to be going faster than uh, real life tests would be at. And that survived really, really well. Bodywork has taken the impact, and not the driver, or the passenger, or anyone else in the car. And yeah, that's pretty damn good. That's surprising, especially considering this has a lot less in the way of bodywork up front than the Grand Marshal does. Let's see what a hatchback can do. This is obviously going a lot quicker than that other car. See if it can deal with the uh, far quicker forces. Ooh. Well, the roof has gone, technically. And obviously, there's been a lot of bodywork damage, and the door has gone as well. With the chassis rails going down. But. The actual steering wheel and has been alright, but the only real worrying concern is the fact that the door has caved into the car rather than out. So, yeah, you might well suffer some damage on the left hand side, but in terms of chest damage and that lot, then uh, yeah, I think you'd be a lot better off in this than uh, a lot of the cars that we've tried out on this uh, episode so far. Let's see what the SUV variant can do and then I think we'll try out one more car. Where's the cherry egg on? There it is. Decently quick one. Now one thing we have seen before is that a higher ride height can tend to uh, negate a crash forces. So obviously this is slightly higher than uh, the SU, the uh, saloon, or the uh, s hatchback, and yeah, that's done really rather well. 
fact, if the car wasn't front wheel drive, it would still drive. Because it is, it's lost off here front wheel and therefore the diff does not allow the uh, one remaining wheel to turn on its own. But yeah, that's done really rather well. Again, the door has bowed in rather than out, which again would perhaps uh, give some injuries, but with side airbags that might not be the case. Right, let's try it one more car. I think we'll try it the ETK 800 series because this is a large car. It does have a lot of bodywork up front but it is also a modern car so let's see if the combination of large vehicle and modern safety features can uh, provide the uh, necessary uh, safety uh, requirements. And that's a no. Oh dear, that is very bad. At least the door hasn't bowed in like it did with the Cherriers, but as you can see from the interior, the steering wheel has completely jotted off to the right there, meaning the airbag would be ineffectual. Your face would basically just fall off it, which I have seen in some crash test videos where the uh, the dummy just basically goes right alongside the uh, airbag. It technically hits it, but it doesn't hit it so much that it stops the dummy falling forward and therefore it just continues forward and then hits the dashboard and yeah not a pretty sight but yeah that's it for today's episode uh, it's a really rather fun kind of crash test to do because yeah it subjects the car to a kind of uh, crash forces that you really wouldn't expect I mean f for instance remember what this car looked like when it hit the 25% overlap now see what it looks like when it hits the uh, crash test barrier pretty much head on about the same kind of speed. I say head on. It's that wasn't head on. <laughs> I've got the uh, how far over you needed to be to be dead onto that crash protest barrier there. Doing about the same kind of speed. And as you can see, perfectly fine. Not completely head on, obviously, but it's more head on than it would be otherwise in the. Uh, 25% uh, overlap and you can see the steering wheel is in the same position, the dashboard hasn't gone all over the place and the door hasn't even really moved either so uh, yeah head on impacts like that are far better than the 25% uh, overlap but the 25% overlap is a crash test that does uh, take place because it is a uh, realistic crash event and uh, yeah it's a devastating one at that and it's certainly the uh, one of the few, uh, kind of crashes I really wouldn't want to be in if I had to choose. Nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.